Thank you, everyone, for staying till the end. I hope you're all awake, at least until I have started talking. Um, <laughs> so I'm Bhargav Jaraman, and I'll be talking about our work on evaluating differentiated private machine learning in practice. So we consider this scenario where the adversary has access to a machine learning model and tries to infer information about the training data. Uh, there have been many works uh, which try to defend against these kind of attacks. Uh, our objective here is to you know, evaluate these attacks in terms of you know, privacy leakage they have empirically. So I'll just begin with the result highlights uh, before delving deep into the talk. Um, so we all know that uh, we can tune the differential privacy parameter epsilon and you can have you know, acceptable utility privacy trade-off. So here we train a neural network model for a CIFAR 100 data set, um, which is a 100 class classification task. And we see that until 100 uh, epsilon value, we don't get any model utility. And, and beyond that, we, uh, the model starts to learn something useful. Um, but from the definition of differential privacy, uh, the, theoretic, uh, the theoretical upper bound on the privacy leakage is guaranteed only from uh, between epsilon of zero to one. So in this range, uh, there doesn't seem to be any uh, useful learning going on. So uh, recent advances such as uh, Randy differential privacy try to bridge this gap. Um, they achieve better accuracy, but even for them, in, the, in this range where we have a theoretical guarantee, there is no useful learning going on. So we went ahead and um, um, empirically analyzed the privacy leakage using uh, actual private, private practical attacks, and turned out there's a huge gap between you know, what can be observed theoretically and what these empirical uh, attacks achieve. Um, in general, uh, as the model starts to learn more, uh, the leakage increases. So now, for the rest of the talk, I'll first begin by giving a brief, brief background about how to apply differential privacy for these machine learning algorithms. And then I'll uh, talk about our experimental evaluation where we try to you know, eva evaluate the privacy leakage of these mechanisms. Um, so this is the most uh, popular flavor of uh, training a machine learning model where you uh, define an object function and you iteratively update the model. Um, so here, the first stage is uh, you could add the noise to the objective function, which is popularly called the objective perturbation. Or you could either, uh, add the noise to the gradients, which is called gradient perturbation. Or finally, you could also add the noise to the model that's learned at the end, which is called output perturbation. Since the inception of differential privacy in 2006, there have been a lot of work uh, which use uh, either objective perturbation or output perturbation to, uh, for binary classification tasks um, using ERM algorithms. And these all achieve pretty good utility for epsilon values uh, less than one, which is good because we have theoretical guarantee here. Uh, but for deep learning, turns out output perturbation and objective perturbation are uh, not applicable. The reason is that these methods uh, require some kind of a bound on the uh, sensitivity, and we don't know how to do this, do this for at least complex algorithms like deep learning. So we are just left with gradient perturbation, and the initial attempts for uh, using gradient perturbation towards deep learning ended up consuming a lot of budget, uh, to the order of 300,000, something like that, which doesn't seem good. Um, so the main problem here is gradient perturbation. At each iteration, you need to sample noise and add it. So the naive composition of differential privacy um, ends up having a linear relation with the number of iterations uh, for the privacy budget. Recent advancements, uh, like the Rennie differential privacy and the ZCDP and all, uh, they try to reduce this uh, by a factor of square root of t in the epsilon term, but at, in doing so, they increase the failure probability by a small factor delta. So using these methods, the recent works uh, ended up training deep networks uh, with a very good privacy, uh, with very good utility, and uh, consume just uh, epsilon of like three or four. Uh, to put things into perspective, epsilon of three is, uh, lies here in our plot, um, it still doesn't have good theoretical guarantee because it's still greater than one, uh, but this is where we stand for now. So now moving on to the experiments. Uh, we train logistic regression and neural network models for 200 class classification tasks, uh, one on the sci 100 data set and the other on the purchase 100 data set. And we evaluate uh, the two metrics, accuracy loss and privacy leakage to just see the utility and privacy trade-offs. 
Uh, due to time constraints, I'll just go in, into the details of the results of Cypher 100 dataset. You could refer to the paper for purchase under dataset. Um, so what we do is we split the data set into training and test sets. Uh, we train the model over the train set and we evaluate the accuracy loss over the test set. And the accuracy loss is basically relative to the private, non-private model. So um, accuracy loss value of zero means the model is as good as a non-private model in terms of accuracy. And a accuracy loss of one means it's not learning anything at all. Um, so here are the results for logistic regression trained on Cypher 100 data set. Um, as you can see, RDB has the most improved composition, and hence it, uh, over all the epsilon values, it uh, has a much better accuracy than the uh, naive composition. Um, you could uh, actually, if you see, you fix a privacy budget, then RDB adds much less noise than the naive composition. Or in other words, if you restrict the amount of noise these methods are allowed to add, then RDP consumes uh, an order of magnitude lesser privacy budget than naive composition. Um, and this is what this uh, was supposed to do. Um, as highlighted, RDP has an accuracy level of 0.1 um, for epsilon value of 100, and the same accuracy is achieved by epsilon at, uh, by an composition at epsilon of 500. Uh, now we evaluate the privacy leakage. For this, uh, we uh, consider an adversary which tries to do membership inference attacks. Um, the first attack is that of Reza Shokri et al. Uh, here, we first train the um, shadow models and then uh, we train an uh, attack model which you know tries to learn from the shadow models and you know tries to predict whether the particular record was a member or not and the second uh, attack that we train is uh, that of yometer uh, here the attacker has access to the model and also knows some extra auxiliary information such as the expected training loss of the uh, targeted model so using this the privacy leakage is calculated as uh, the difference between the true positive rate and the false positive rate of the uh, adversary performing the membership into the tax. So here are the results for logistic regression um, on Cypher 100 data set again with privacy leakage. Uh, again, we see the same trend. RDP, since it adds the least amount of noise, it uh, tends to increase uh, the privacy leakage. Um, again, uh, for epsilon value of 10, RDP has a 0 0.06 leakage, which doesn't seem too high. Uh, at this point, uh, the accuracy was like close to 0.1. Accuracy loss was 0.1. Um, so we also measure the uh, positive predictive value, which is basically gives of all the predictions made by the membership predictions made by the adversary, what fraction of them were truly uh, the correct members. So um, a base rate of 0.5 PPV would mean it's a completely random guessing. So 0.55 even for epsilon value of 1000 means uh, the privacy mechanism are doing really well, uh, really great in this uh, task. But turns out, even the non-private model has a PPP of 0.56, so it means at least in this task, uh, even the non-private models are private enough. Um, so uh, the uh, logistic regression that we had, it had just 5,000 uh, trainable parameters. So what we did was we had a two-layer neural network which has more than like 100,000 training parameters, and hence it has a larger capacity, so we believe it should leak more. Um, and to give perspective, the recent state of the art deep learning models are much, much bigger than this. It's just like 100 parameters, 100,000 parameters. The state of the art might have like millions and millions of parameters, and then we believe they will leak even more. So here are the accuracy loss results for a neural network model. Um, again, RDP at epsilon of 10 has almost 50% accuracy loss, which is pretty high. Um, that's the same as, as uh, naive composition for epsilon of 500. And none of these models, even for epsilon of 1,000, reaches a zero accuracy loss. Um, uh, the best that RDB does is like 0.25 accuracy loss. So we went ahead and uh, measured the privacy leakage. Um, here, uh, for epsilon of 10, RDB has a leakage of 0 0.07, which seems pretty small. But remember, at this point, the accuracy loss also was like 50%, which is too high. Um, but for higher epsilon values, um, Turns out the PPV is as high as 0 0.74, which is, which is a lot. Um, to put things in perspective, non-private model here has a 0.94 PPV, which is like super high, which means like the adversary has a very high confidence of in operating every member uh, clearly from the non-private model. Um, so now we know that there is a privacy leakage. So we want to understand 
uh, is this leakage due to the data or is it just due to the randomness that's present in the data? So for this, what we did was we uh, trained the RDP model with epsilon of 1000 uh, and saw that of all the al almost 8000 predictions made by the adversary, 6000 or something were like um, true members and uh, they were like 2000 false positive. So the PPV was like 0.74 as we saw earlier. And we ran the algorithm again um, and this time again we uh, had a PPV of 0.74 but we are interested in the intersection, right? So at the intersection, um, turns out the PPV increases from 0.74 to 0.80 which means uh, um, there's something going on. So the leakage is due to the data, not, uh, not due to the randomness. If it was completely random, we wouldn't expect even the intersection, you know, to, we would expect the intersection to have like same PPP of 0.74, but since it's increasing, we know that something is going on. It's something about the data that's uh, revealing this. So we went ahead and did intersection of more and more models uh, up till five. So we see that as we do more and more intersection of these models, uh, the PPV keeps on increasing from 0.5 all the way to 0.822. So we clearly know that there's something about the data which is making them more vulnerable. Um, so this is the main takeaway here. So um, to wrap everything up, um, for logic regression model, uh, even the non-private model was secure enough, um, so we didn't have any privacy leakage. But for the uh, neural network model, there was a huge privacy leakage, um, even for non-private model. And for the private models at least had uh, reduced, uh, tried to reduce the privacy leakage, but still there was a significant amount of leakage there. So privacy doesn't come for free, at least not in all the cases. And the most uh, significant takeaway that we saw across all the settings is like there's a huge gap between the theoretical upper bound on privacy leakage and what we observe in practice. So uh, we in principle want to bridge this gap. Like we, we know they, that there are definitely um, attacks which might be much more capable than what we have in uh, the current state of the attacks. So, uh, so this is the final conclusion that uh, this is kind of a takeaway what uh, the research should be going towards. Um, so with this, I end my talk and I'm ready for the questions. Thank you. We've got plenty of time for questions if people want to ask more differential privacy, machine learning, deep learning things. Here's your chance. I think I made everyone sleep. Do you have anything more you want to add? Uh, what are you doing next? Uh, so we are next as in the research or what I'm going to do after like five minutes or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, in terms of research, uh, we are actually looking into why these, we, we still don't know why these, like we know that there's a leakage, there are certain members which are being revealed again and again, but we don't know why. So we are looking into that why part we're seeing like uh, recent works have suggested that there might be something like fairness issue or something which is causing certain members more you know, vulnerable. They might be outliers. So we are just looking into those things. So that, that's what I think. Yeah. You've got a question? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so the neural network model had about 100,000 parameters. Mm -hmm. Did you look at all into how this changed if you varied the number of parameters, if you used 10,000 or a million? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. If you increase the parameters, then of course the capacity is increasing. We would definitely ex expect uh, greater privacy loss, but we didn't do that in the experiment because you know we are constrained by the amount of time we can spend on the experiment. So because we are repeating this experiment like 400 times for one data set and each uh, training is like takes at least uh, several hours or so. So, but yeah, that, that we, we have seen in practice also, uh, people have also done this kind of uh, evaluation and with larger models. Um, there are other problems also with neural networks. You would have seen, uh, uh, you would have heard the previous talk, uh, secret sharer. There are some more problems like memorization and all going on when you have very large models. So not just the membership inference, there are even more problems if you have a larger model, so. Thank you. Very cool research, by the way. Thank you. Last chance. Okay, let's thank the speaker once more.